Hey everybody, welcome back to the ESL Legendary Series Season 2 Week 4 broadcast. I'm joined by Andre Gritor Hengchua, a longtime friend. And What's a, up, buddy? A, a co-caster that I'm proud to say that I, I used to work with you all the time. Do you know how long it's been since we've casted together? No, you actually told me you looked it up right before I looked it up broadcast. just now. It's been two years. It a feels whole two years? It feels a lot longer, let me Jeez. tell you. Jeez. Because yeah. in the eSports years, it's, we're pretty much in dog years, so it's right, 14, 14 years. 14 years. So, I mean... That's a long time ago, man. That's Things right, have man. changed. You went into a card game. <laughs> I went into a card game. Look where we oh, ended yeah, up. That's right. Another card game. Uh, people don't know, but uh, Greetor work used to work, or uh, are you still working? I'm still working with Okay, him, yeah. started working a lot with Jay Carver, one of the most popular uh, poker streamers on Twitch, Turn. and uh, do a lot of the Run It Up series. And now uh, he's here casting. He's been playing a lot of Hearthstone. You're pretty good at it, man. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm All no right. Dan Frodo and Show. I'm no <laughs> TJ. Oh, well, you I mean, mean you haven't gotten one six in tournaments? There. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if we're talking StarCraft, I mean, back <laughs> MLG days. Sure, we can go sure, there. I got you. But, Fair no, I, I love it. I mean, I, I draw a lot of similarities from mm -hmm. poker, obviously, into Hearthstone. Sure. Um, I got to play in the main event, which was awesome. For, oh, that's for right, poker. the World Series, right? Uh, did okay. Did not make the money. Did, did, you, uh, did you beat your expectations? I did. Good, I did. That's I make it to thing. day two, which is hard to do. You know, right. you're a lot of people get weeded out. 7,000 people in mm -hmm. there, or high 6Ks, and... I made it past fifty percent. That's good, man. Well, you know, there's always next year, and there's always another chance. Uh, happy to have Sorry. you here, Andre, and happy to be here to cast some Hearthstone with you, uh, because Hearthstone's also a pretty good card game. We have two groups that are going to be taking place over the course of two days. In case anybody's tuning in, uh, our next match we have Modern Leper versus Cross Seven Seven Two Four. Now, Modern Leper uh, is a player that came through the Open. In fact, most of these players did, and he comes in as a player that people don't really know much about, but he actually did really well in his qualifying week, so I'm surprised to see him go down so easily to Luigi's. But Luigi's is also a player who's been around for so long that um, a lot of players would say that he's one of the most underrated, like, semi-pro players, I think. He isn't the only person to bring out, like, Shaman. He had probably the highest variance decks that we saw sure. in that last, uh, the, the first series, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and he did run into a little bit of just, you know, the wrong side of the end of sure. RNG, which, I mean, it happens. What can you do? Uh, but the Shaman pick is probably the most interesting thing to th talk about. It is the Mech Shaman that we saw before. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it hmm, it's very specific in its role. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very linear. It's yeah. just, you know, you, you hit the face. Exactly. And the thing about the Mech Shaman is that, like, more... I know everyone jokes about Face Hunter or, like, really aggressive decks in general about, uh, you know being able to rush down your opponent. But more so than anything, Mech Shaman is so particular because every time I lose with this deck, I swear I just should have hit the face like every <laughs> single time. Like I always I like if I just instead of trading I hit uh, my opponent's health points, I would have won. And I, it's like one of those decks where it's like it's so thin because you need to be able to do that damage. So that being said, would you consider uh, Face Shaman to kind of be redundant with Face Hunter? And would you say that Face Hunter is a little bit better just because of the hero power, because of just the inherent cards oh, yeah. that it has? That, I mean, that right? hero power is insane. It's so good. Every time. I mean, it's the fact that you get to draw a card <laughs> that does two damage every time. I was telling the TJ, you last 15 turns. That's 30 damage. It baby. is. It sets a 15 turn <laughs> clock and you can accelerate by twice by just drawing another card. That's so, right. Uh, uh, the thing about Mech Shaman, though, is that, uh, it's just like you said, the variance, the explosiveness of this deck is outrageous. We've seen turn three kills yeah. uh, just because of how fast it is, and that's probably the quickest you'll ever see. I know in some other games, like Magic the Gathering, for example, you can see a turn two or turn, like, very rarely a turn one kill, but it's one of those mm -hmm. scenarios where you can have it. And Hearthstone, that's pretty absurd, and Sham this Mech Shaman is the closest thing to it. And, uh, one of the decks that can stop it is Chinese Priest. I mean, we call it Light Bomb Priest. You can call it mm -hmm. the Chinese Priest. Uh, but Death Lords in specific yeah. can stop that Shaman deck in I its mean, tracks. I mean, Death Lord Resurrect is just so scary if I'm playing against that. Obviously, it just gives you 16 more hit points that your opponent has to go through. And it's so hard to deal with. Of course, we do see the, um, the there is more capabilities of defending it. With the Silence, you're able to to at least get past it for a little bit but still like it comes down to that beginning stage whether or mm -hmm. not priests can stabilize whether they can get just board or stuff on the board to just right. stick i think the the big determining factor is who's going to or you know can cross let this priest get past his opponent's decks we saw druid we saw warrior the grim patient warrior and we see this mech shaman mm -hmm. if he can defeat one of these decks i think uh, cross has a pretty good chance Oh it's just that god. priest is generally a, a pretty big liability. Oh my god. 
It's gorgeous, this is nuts. Bro. That is <clears throat> gorgeous. You have a great turn two, or turn one, turn two, and turn three, and then of course. All you need to do is fit in a turn four somewhere, and then turn five, Fell Reaver. There's so much damage popping out here. You go for the greed, right? Oh, yeah. Coin Mech Warper oh, yeah. into the two Whirling Zappomatics. Oh, yeah. And if, if it goes wrong, you know, he has Shadow Word Death for some mysterious reason. You just play a Whirling Zappomatic. For sure. It's I think oh, we this legitimately like, might see a turn four or five kill. This is like the worst situation for Priest, right? Like, there's nothing you can really play. Yeah. Even. Oh, man. Wow. This is really bad. Wow. And um, oh. the thing about it is Cross still has ways to, like, out in a sense, but he needs to pick up the Arcanized Soul Priest. Yep. And he still has to wait. He's taking, Ooh. you know, 14 damage still, even if he gets the Arcanized Soul Priest. So, regardless, this is so, so brutal. Yeah. Turn three Power Mace. Just go face, bro. Would you do that, or do you crackle the 3-4? That's very clearly his only response, and turn four is also pretty awkward from your opponent. You have a 75% chance. Power Mace is definitely a really good thing, but something that's worth evaluating because uh, you just never know, man. Crackle is also finishing damage. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could uh, it's still next turn you have like yeah. you push face, uh, or excuse me, you push uh, your Mech Warper into the three four, <laughs> and then you use your Power Mace. You charge up your your uh, whirlwind zapomatic, yep. and you're good to go. Find out. Don't uh, even need to do that. Yeah, that's game. Yep. Right here. It's like you can't actually deal <laughs> yeah. with it. Uh, well, that he, that needs to be the Arcanist Soul Priest, right? Yeah. So I he heals because so. there's 6, 8, 11, 13. No, 13 points of damage on board. Man, yep. really, you can't actually deal with this. It doesn't matter if it goes to the we Mech Warper or not. Right. It's just going to do stuff. Well, Jeez. Mm. Shaman Mech. I mean, that's the thing with uh, Shaman Mech. Right. Uh, it's either you're winning really, really early and super fast. You have to draw the right cards, which was like the dream scenario at mm -hmm. this particular uh, that's right. spot. And you're going to win. Or, you know, you just fizzle out really fast. The thing about the deck, too, is that uh, it, it, it's really good at dealing with one thing at a time and then pushing for damage. And that's why you need that curve early on. Um, a lot of times that hero power is just kind of useless. So if you're stuck just yeah. playing hero power, it's really hard to climb back on board. The only way you can is like Dr. Boom or to use the Fire Elemental to gain tempo. So uh, I, I'm looking at that mech deck and I was like, wow, that's just going to be really good to steamroll whatever he plays. But the most important thing is, you know, can Cross win with this Priest deck? That's just the big question throughout all of his series so far. If he can't, he's out of the tournament. Just like that, he's going to have to come through the Redemption next week in order to win. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these guys are going to be fighting out of redemption. It's still mm -hmm. a very long and arduous journey for uh, for um, for uh, Leper, but I mean, at least he's starting off on the right foot. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he has one more series to go if he does win this series, sure. where he has to um, go and try to get second place. So let me ask you, Andre, uh, what deck are you do you like playing right now? I like Handlock, bro. You like Handlock? I like Handlock okay. the most. Because uh, it's very control-oriented? It's very control-oriented. There's a lot of different mind games that you can do because I can I can throw in Giants, I can get rid of Giants, and no matter demons, what, right? you have to defend against Giants, which is like, you just get free life in like long series or, you know, if you constantly switch up your decks. Obviously, if you're not switching up your decks, then it becomes very linear. It's one of, it's. One of the hardest decks. I think, in my opinion, it's probably like right now the second hardest deck to play in the game. I like it too because, like, I feel like you learn the most just because you have to understand the other opponent's decks right. to be able to Their properly range capabilities. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it just—it's like when's the right time to tap? When's the right time to you know push for damage? When's the right time to trade board? Like, it's just really, really cool. I feel like in terms of learning, grinding up the ladder, uh, it's going to be the most efficient. At least that's for me. I just like it. I enjoy it. No, the, it's really, really fun deck to play. Unfortunately, um, I'm not good enough to play Handlock. I just die. Frodo, <laughs> that's a lie. I no, know it's, it's a lie. true, man. It You're gonna to watch. Lie. You're gonna watch. Like I, I'm gonna suggest some plays, and Modern Leopard is gonna be like, "Nope, this is the better <laughs> play." And I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." All Life right. of a caster. We'll find out. Hey, bro. I know. <laughs> I know. Wild growth to start things off, an excellent start for Druid. Two wild growths. Not so much. Starts getting suspect because it's one of those things where wild growth is great in the beginning so that you can accelerate, but you want to be putting on pressure from turns or from mana slots four onwards. Yeah. It might work out okay because right now he has uh, wild growth on five mana into the Ancient of Lore. That might be okay, okay. but uh, still, you'd rather have minions. Yeah, you know? of course. 
Uh, not a bad start for our Warlock either. I mean, he starts out with the Hellfire, which is a, actually pretty important, I would say, uh, to defend against a lot of, well, not so much the Pilot Destroyers, but more so the uh, Shade of Naxxramas. You need sure. to get rid of those very, very quickly. Right. And also, it brings your life total down. That sounds kind of weird, but, you know, Mount Molten Giants, you want to get those out faster before you're, like, turn sevens, really, because the worst thing that could happen is you get your life total down, and then they just coin out uh, the combo and deal 14 points of damage right dead. Or they don't even have to coin anymore, man. They just use the power of That's Ragnaros. True. That's true. All right, so Dark Bomb onto this. Just reduce the damage a little bit. Oh, oh wow. perfect. And Immortal Coil. Let's just start trading out, get better cards. It's uh, still not a bad spot. All right. Hmm. I think you drew it here. Yeah, I think minion pressure is definitely preferable to just set up because the Ancient of Lore, the what what the Ancient of Lore does is it sets minion on the board and draws you more cards to mm -hmm. play more minions. Versus you could have the minion deal the damage and then uh, do the same thing the following turn. So it's whether or not you want to get the cards earlier or you want to get the damage in sooner. Sure. And I think against the handlock, you'd want to go damage because if you play a slower game against handlock. You might give a turn four per initiative. Like, say you Wild Growth here, he plays the Twilight Drake, and you don't have a way to deal with it. Twilight Drake bullies the board. Sure. But at the same time, like, what is my turn six, too, right? Like, he wants to bring out his Ancient of Lore, his Ragnaros, but he just doesn't have the capabilities yet. Uh, at least, like, if you Wild Growth now, you can place, you know, your Ancient of Lore after that, start drawing some cards. Sure. I think that's what he's really thinking about, but the better play, right. in my opinion, is going to be the Druid of Claw, and you just hope for a good draw. It just gets more awkward the more the exactly. game goes on. The yeah. mana usage is not as uh, clean. And then the Wild Growth Wrath plus the Hero Power is something, hypothetically, you could fill out the curve with. That's true. So it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. All right. Oh, that's okay, so now he has a curve. He's got two Sludge Belchers back-to-back, -back. and it's pretty interesting that Sludge Belcher, even though it's weaker in stats, actually deals okay mm -hmm. with the Drew of the Claw. Very standard turn. Right. Nothing too crazy. Now, what's uh, funny is that Myron Leopard's like, yeah, I'd be okay with him using a hero power because he foregoes development. But he actually has to anyways, and yep. he's, he might as well wild growth. The other question is, does he want to protect the health on the Drew of the Claw and use Swipe here? But Swipe is... Seems to be like a pretty useful direct damage tool as well in this matchup. Direct so, damage, also yeah. dealing with the bigger minions, obviously the mountain giants, all that stuff. Like you, you do need some of that stuff to an extent just to be able to get through that wall in the beginning stages to put damage on your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, does he wrath here though? Because he could wrath instead of hero powering. Oh, that's interesting. And just go for uh, the cycle. Yeah, wrathing for one. Might is as well, right? Okay, yeah, your hand's not that impressive. All right. That's uh, it's reasonable. He would have liked to just draw that. Yeah. He was just one card away, man. Just one card yeah. away. Yeah. Never lucky. <laughs> Wild growth and hero powers. Very reasonable turn. Ooh. All right. Cross it's up. Readjust his hair and realizes, like, it's, sh it's showtime here. But what can he do? He can dark bomb this. But that doesn't really develop anything else. He gets to put out Ancient Watcher. Yeah. So I guess the sludge At least it's something, here. though. Because, I mean, he does have two owls in hand, so it is mm -hmm. pretty helpful. Uh, I mean, what else are you going to really silence at this point? That's true. So if your opponent has a Sylvanas, you'd like to silence it, but that's about it. Yeah. I mean, you're not silencing anything else. I think just to put something out in the field, you have to do something like that. Um, would I consider a tap? Mm, probably not. Oh, Sludge Belcher. Yeah, Sludge Belcher here is, is okay as well, just because it contests a 4-3. I think if it was still a 4-6, you could make a case of playing Asian Watcher and stuff like that. But I, I think in this scenario, it's, it's much better. Right. Now, here's the ultimate question. Is it time to play something that has a huge impact like Ragnaros? Usually, Ragnaros against Handlock is always one of the scenarios where, do you want it to hit the face? Because even though you're trying to rush it down, you you know make it so that way he can have counterplay. Yeah. Um. I am afraid of BGHs, though, obviously, in this spot. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's still a lot of cards in the Warlock hand, a lot that you haven't been able to see. You know those are conditional cards, mostly. And uh, there's a pretty high chance. We have seen Cross uh, before. I think he only brought one Big Game Hunter. I'm not sure if there was the second one in. I think Luigi's brought two Big Game Hunters. Wow, he came, he came prepared with double BGH. He doesn't mess around, bro. He's a man. 
It makes sense, right? Everyone's playing Dr. Boom. Yeah. So you might as well have one big game hunter, and another one is uh, for the for the BM when you don't need it. <laughs> exactly. Right. All right. So he's going to trade out. Play Thorson. One, 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 two. Yep. Just okay. pop it out. That's fine. So yep. turn nine, he has like a rag hero power type of play. Um, he yeah, he's got like the swipe with the Ancient of Lore too. Yeah. That's really strong. All right, Molten doesn't do too much right now. How does he get rid of this? Does he just trade into it and then Dark Yeah, pump? so there's two ways to ramp here. You can ramp with cards or you can ramp with mana. Because Emperor Thorison has a high chance of surviving, but mm -hmm. you also let your opponent to have Emperor Thorison. So I think you'd rather tap, play Dark Bomb, play the Ancient Watcher. Okay. Well, uh, do you, do you that consider... Consider... Mm, that's a really good card to draw. But if your opponent has Big Game Hunter, Big Game Hunter swipe, you're in big trouble. Yeah. Yeah. You just give up everything. It's because Thorson for the Druid is just too much potency with the Force of Nature Savage War combination. The Makes fact sense. is usually the combo takes the entire turn. And Druid has a problem where it can't do it can't do it can't multitask in a turn. It can't remove and play minions easily without like double innervate. I see. And uh, uh, having uh, Thorson on the board allows him to break the rules. Like, so imagine, if he was able to do that, Force Nature would have been 7 mana, and he could have swiped. So yeah. he can clear and do damage, or he can do wow. 20, no, 25 what a points turn, of damage. Man. That is such a brutal turn right there. Because, of course, he has he's just pushing for so much damage. He does mm. have lethal next turn. He is threatening that with Force of Nature's Saboteur. Right. He'll have, uh, let's see, 10 plus the f uh, 4. Exactly. So that's 14. He has 28 points of damage. Um, oh, okay. That's assuming he doesn't just taunt up, though. If he plays yeah, of course. The, the Mountain Giant and then taunt up. I think that probably is going to be the play. I can't see anything mm -hmm. else. The alternative is to Owl and then Defender of Argus and kill off one of the 5-5s. Five okay. But that's pretty weak to swipe. Yeah. Oh man, swipe Ragnaros would be sick <laughs> if he if he plays that in order order. So, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think there's any room for tapping here. Unfortunately, tapping normally you can try to squeeze in mountain giants with more uh, finer plays, but mm -hmm. not in this scenario either. So it looks like it's a giant, or it's an owl play. Looks like he's going for that owl. Plus yeah. Defender. What I like about this is that it utilizes the Owl when the second one, like you mentioned at the very beginning of the game, is that it's going to be normally sitting there awkwardly. What I don't like about it is that Mountain Giant becomes more expensive and it's really hard to get the taunt. Um, and can I go back into the what I like about it again, Andre? Okay. I'm sorry I'm bouncing back no, and no, forth. No, no, no. I like that it's also playing around Big Game Hunter so he doesn't just immediately die That's and true, get swung man. over. That's true. Um, so he's playing around a lot of things back and forth. He's weighing his options. Because a lot of times you're actually like noticing where your opponents are pulling from, what cards are right, being right, kept. Right. So if you see like, you know, Rag and Swipe have been there for quite a long time. Those mm -hmm. two cards are the two cards that he's like, oh, those could be Big Game Hunter. I right. need to be very careful about that. So All it makes right. a lot of sense. Here we go, man. Time to drop Senor El Fuego. Do it, do it, do it. Is there a reason not to? Because mm. if you hit the face, he's at 17. He can only play Molten Giant number one. I, I don't see why you wouldn't do it. Right? Like, it just sets you up for the next Ragnarok. Because you want to lose and you want to conceal the information that you have yeah. Ragnarok. You could even <laughs> silence Rag and then Savage Roar, bro. Oh my god, you're yeah, actually bro. right. That's pretty fun. I, I mean, that's not the that's not the way to actually do it, <laughs> but you if could. you want yeah, yeah, to yeah. do a go for flashiness, that is, I approve of that play, Greetor. All right, double Maltons. Doesn't really help at yeah. turn eight. Uh, it's a tough spot, man. I mean, <sighs> do you just... Gosh, I, I don't even know what you do here. Well, if he... Say he just taunts up defensively, like Mountain Giant, Sun Fury. He's working at effectively 28, 25 health. And his opponent will have 21 damage to the combo. He would lose 8 of it doing damage. So yeah, he, he'd still be barely safe. Yep. But that's assuming that uh, the Rag doesn't hit the face and he goes face with everything. It's so, just like a... Scary stuff. Yeah, it's really, really rough. And 
You know, this is the one of the biggest parts about like Warlock versus Druid. I feel like if you want to start playing your giants really, really early, you need to start using stuff like Hellfire, and mm -hmm. you need to tap very aggressively so that you can get out your Molten Giants really, really quickly and then be able to heal up. Mm -hmm. But at this stage, it's like he's caught in a weird spot where all of his giants just don't synergize right now with how the game is played out. Like, you want right. to get those out as soon as possible before turn... Eight turn seven around there. Uh, well, I th I believe this should still be lethal here because you just have to use the combo, clear all the minions, and then uh, hit the face, and that's gonna be game. So, the handlock uh, does not withstand the pressure of the druid. This is so interesting because I feel like a lot of players still sigh with the handlock and <laughs> say like, yeah, handlock's great against druid because how do you deal with so many minions? You yeah. only have one big game hunter. It's just a sheer pressure that they put on. Plus yeah. trees. It's difficult, man. Yeah. I, I I always like am super frustrated about this matchup. Yeah? You tilt? I don't tilt it now. <laughs> I used Broden, you yeah. know I used to tilt, bro. Of course, man. It's <laughs> it's pretty enraging to lose yeah. to this. But uh ever since picking up poker, I've uh, I've controlled You've myself. Cooled down. I cooled down, I understand RNG, statistics a lot better. It's good. Everything's okay. Hopefully, I'm not a uh, <laughs> hopefully, Modern Leopard can do the same. He's the series is tied one-one, even though uh, he got a really quick win with the Mech Shaman. Looks like we're going to go into Game Three, all tied up. Looking at the Warrior decks, uh, we have Grim Patron on both sides. Mm -hmm. uh, that's also going to be really key. But again, the question is, you know, even if he wins here with the Druid, can he win with the Priest? Yeah, Priest I against Handlock, it might be an inevitability. Yeah. Depends on how it pans out. That's an interesting matchup, obviously, but I think in general, I like Warlock a lot better. I have better times with it in general, just because, like, well, you just have so many threats so often. You can play, not around Light Bomb, but you know Light Bomb's there. You know it's the threat. That's right. You just make sure that you're pushing with waves rather than, you know, no. swarming the board, mm -hmm. and you'll be, you'll be in a good shot. Okay. All right. Well, uh, maybe there's an opportunity there, but I'm still feeling I'm still feeling like Modern Leper has a hu huge advantage here. Just queue up Handlock again. Sure. It's good against both those matchups. Use Patient War to clean up here. Yeah. That's what I'm in favor for. And if I'm, uh, and if, <clears throat> and if I am uh, his opponent, I think I just go straight for the Grim Patient War because I want to use that to defeat my opponent, not have to play the Mirror, and then uh, use Light Bomb as a way to deal with Grim Patient because that's yeah. that's ultimately what this priest is for. To make sure that Grim Patient Warrior can't win as easily, and also you have like the most chances to win with your your um, your priest deck, right? Rather than you know trying to just clutch the last one. All but, right, so here you go, Priest versus well, Warrior. Go. Can it be exactly how we panned out? That's a pretty great opening hand from Modern Leopard, though. Oh yeah, you get the card draw, you get the weapons, everything results in card advantage, which is so brutal because when you just get the card advantage early on as the Grim Patient Warrior, you get to really pick and choose um, how you trade and how you set up the board. Uh, you don't have to use Despite as defensively to clear the board. You can hold it for an Acolyte play or a copy of the Grim Patient play yeah. or a, a huge Frothing Berserker. It's just so much nice tempo in the beginning stage. Uh, I want to ask you, Frenet, like how much do you read into how many cards people mulligan? Uh, I used to a lot for Warlock, but nowadays it almost doesn't matter because... Yeah. Even if they're like super aggressive warlocks and you read into it, it's like all it is is basically a confidence reader. It's like, okay, well, he probably has a fiery war act if he kept three of his cards as warrior. Gotcha. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does tell you a little bit of information. Like, if he saw that his opponent kept three cards here, he probably shouldn't draw that Northshire cleric. But in terms of optimization of play, he should play it. So then you can play the injured blade mass and circle of healing. See if that's the case. Right. As I mean, we move on, I mean, it's a it's a tough spot no matter what because ordinarily you want <clears> to buff that up with um, with power and shield. Right. And well, th the key is that in, in Hearthstone, you're making the best percentage play, just like correct. anything, right? Yeah. So the best percentage play almost every time is to play that Northshire Cleric so you can get the card of the Injured Blade Master. But it's as we said, yep. getting that card advantage is so significant. Of course, the big part for uh, from Grim Patron, as TJ was saying, is just like being able to cycle, being able to draw, get that stuff out. And one thing that we saw with the Grim Patrons recently, or in the earlier series, was that he just was not able to cycle. He was not able to draw, 
And it got into a really uncomfortable spot. Okay. Yeah, reasonable, but yeah. that's also going to go down too to an execute. I want to ask about Vol'jin. What do you like about this card in the deck at all? A lot of people thought Vol'jin would have been excellent legendary minion to be included in the Priest Arsenal, but he's been in and out, even though the functionality of it is great. It is. It, the biggest problem I have with it is that it's always going to be that conditional card, and it's a very expensive, um, rare situation. I shouldn't say rare, but like the dream scenarios don't come up nearly as much. Like Defensively, you have it with Sylvanas, and then offensively, you have it with obviously getting rid of stuff. Right. Um, but, you know, I just feel like overall the, the synergy of, of the card just, like, it's very, very slow in such a fast-paced type of style that there's a lot of times better uses of that slot. I mean, you know, I, I say better uses. I don't actually really, really know, but sure. like, it feels like there's better uses for that slot rather than filling it with, um, with the Vulgin. I just feel like you can get a stronger minion out, or you can have something that does a lot more impact into the game. Yeah, so I, I think it's a really fair conclusion. Um, and he might doesn't really have that many good targets. Dr. Boom yeah. is one of them. Gromash is another. Yep. But how long will he have until that inevitability comes? And can Cross even draw into the Light Bomb? Do you like using the weapon here, or do you like uh, executing something or battle raging so you draw like a lot of cards? What, what do you feel like is I best think, here? yeah, we have to open up with Despite just because it sets us up for like Grim Patron. It just puts our opponent in a weird spot too because like there's so many cards that they don't want to be playing. Like Lotheb now, I mean, even though Lotheb would be like, regardless, a, a pretty decent drop. Um, it dies immediately, and also there's a lot of synergy that can happen with that death rattle. Uh, it just, no matter what, it makes your opponent scared, and there are more likely situations. Like, let's say there's there's Lotheb here, there's mm, uh, Sludge Belcher or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they're more inclined to put out a Sludge Belcher somehow, misplay. There, there's more chances for misplays with this uh, this. Best just set up. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's just hard to play around in some ranges of things. Yeah. Is the I think is a really good summary of it. All right. So, second death spite. Meh. Does he want to set up some stuff here? Execute and you can battle rage first, and then um, evaluate and then execute and draw. Like th these are like a lot of really powerful moves. Oh yeah. As I, I would like to also start fishing for things like Warsong Commander and yep. uh, even the Emperor Thorson to make a lot of these really expensive cards cheap. So I'd, I'd be okay with uh, a Battle Rage here. Grim Patience would feel a little clunky just to drop it here. Yeah, just like so many capabilities for your opponent to right. just eliminate it. I like this, too. Slam is... Mm, okay. Interesting. He's so he's going to set it up. But the thing is, like, if his opponent had... Oh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. If his opponent had uh, Arcanized Soul Priest clear... I mean, he's controlling the state of the board, but... Hmm. Yeah. It's I like, mean, this is a Light Bomb turn, right? That's I think another so. thing, too. A Light Bomb, uh, Soul Priest, either of those okay. two are fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really, really big threats out there. And he's just hoping his opponent doesn't have it, which is like a big hope. Um, you know, it's kind of tough. I think if you were to do this, it's best to do it right now because if you think like you're you're not you're gonna mulligan to get rid of light bombs a lot of the times in the beginning phase, so it's more skewed to not having light bombs than to having it. Sure. Uh, and then of course, Alkanai Soul Priest. Like, if you want to really do the math, it's a lot harder to get it in the first few turns than. If you're constantly drawing, drawing. It's fair. I mean, this is the most powerful play he could have made. Right? Yes. This is like, you put out 11 damage onto the board. But the opponent can't really deal with it. As you're explaining, too, it's also like a little bit of the highest variance, too. Right? Because you could, it could be great. It could be terrible for you at the same time. <laughs> but all right. He's going to trade out one. Yeah. This is what no Modern Leopard want to see. Like, no Light Bomb. Yep. Uh, no Akanai, like, Circle of Healing. And that's danger because now Modern Leopard is going to draw a lot. Like it was a gamble to see if he could get away with this and have mm -hmm. good slam mm -hmm. battle rage synergy and draw a bunch of cards. Oh man! And if he picks up uh, Warsong Commander, oh my goodness, 
going to oh, be insane. He can draw three with, with two drop, right? Right. Like, that's so scary. So, so scary. And I'm sure he's going to go for something like that. I mean, he can even slam uh, trading Battle Rage. Right. And he's pretty much solidified his position because he's most likely going to be drawing into something super important. As you get into right. the like turn seven, turn eights, that's where I feel like this um, Grim Patron Warrior just really starts to flourish, does his stuff. You know, he's able to combo so much, especially with like, well, as you said, the Warsong Commander. Right. The sequencing is really important too. You know, slamming first gives him the draw in case it's Warsong Commander versus yep. if he killed off his Death Lord and Warsong Commander came la next, he yep. wouldn't be able to get the charge. There's that Thorsing you were talking about. Yep. And he's really going to trade, trade, Battle Rage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So he does have to play one more card. The Battle Rage is the, the card you Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. That's so right. he's going to be right. drawing full. Oh, man. Might as well. Got to go, though. The problem is if he draws into something that he can't play, <laughs> uh, and he has a full list of hand, those list of cards. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Okay. Whatever. Oh, wow. He's got like he's got such a good hand, anyways. Like you, you can just dump anything. Yeah, it's gorgeous at this point. Are you just are you just gonna execute that one one? Not a big deal. I wouldn't have mind it. I mean, he's got worst on commander, two frothings, and the other grim patron he, and the emperor. Yeah, like he, he just has to drop. Them. He has to know that like the the game is going to be decided in next in the next three turns. So right. we want to just use as many cards as possible from our hand. Well, looks like maybe sooner than that, two turns even. Yeah. Although, well, just he has to. Yeah, he has to There's no play. way to actually kill off your own minions. That's so yeah. funny. First world <laughs> grand patron problems. I have too many cards. What do I do? Oh god. Board's too full. Hold too many legendary minions. Jeez. Just crushing man. It's crazy to see, think about how powerful a win condition this is, just for five mana. Yeah. He almost hit him down from the thirty. 25 damage. This Five hit points, man. He needs Light Bomb now. And now does he get it? Light Bomb now. Uh, uh, that's still reasonable. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It get ri gets rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 minions. Uh, yeah. The Grim Patrons won't spawn again. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter because there's more than enough to right. be able to deal with it. There's Gromash off the uh, Whirlwind Effect yep. to guarantee the 10 damage. Crosses Priest. I, I'm just going to keep saying it, dude. The big question for me in every single series is can he win with this Priest deck? And I think one of the decks he potentially targeted with it is, uh, is gone now. He, he, he was yeah. going to use that to defeat Aggro, and Light Bomb can deal with the Grim Patron, but he just didn't draw it. Yeah. I mean, like, what, what separates this, this Light Bomb Priest from, like, other Priests that have a higher win rate? Like, what would uh, you say is the highest win rate for the current meta? For priest, for priest, it, it probably is uh, along the lines of the Kalento priest, which is um, a lot of control and combos. But I know that even he hasn't been enjoying it as much. He mm -hmm. used to play it in a lot of the tournaments because uh, it was very good to answer a lot of the meta. But the problem with priest is that it's just so reactive that it's really good against one type of deck. Yeah. And right now, aggro is good. Um, as you can see with really aggressive decks. Mid-range is also starting to make a comeback, especially mid-range Demon Lock. It's really powerful. Combo is in play, too, because you have yeah. uh, Grim Patron Warrior, and Freeze Mage still technically counts as like combo that you can't deal with. And then you have Control that's always there, like Control Warrior. So like, how do you prepare against everything? Yeah. Everything is viable. There's too much burst, I think, in one turn for a priest to be that effective, right? Like, there's mm -hmm. one or two turns, like, the board just gets filled completely. It gets very, very scary very fast. Uh, sure. And things stick very easily. So I just feel like um, you know, a priest in general, obviously, is having a very rough time. Uh, it's going to be tough for this last series, or this last match, to really become effective. Okay. I can see that. Um, the last match uh, is going to be the Handlock versus either the Priest or the Grim Patron. I would assume that he's just going to go straight with the the, the Grim Patron because it might have the better chance. Mm -hmm. I, is it because I'm so low on Priest? I think Priest is really weak. Now, I say that having a person playing Priest in tournaments and, and considering it's weak, I think this is definitely the best choice here. Executes to gain the tempo. Card draw because Handlock's passive. That's what Cross needs to do here. But Handlock is one of the best classes at dealing with Grim Patron. You've got the AoE to match it, and you've got the pressure and the big minions. Also, I like it to push it to game five. If you do win here, like you know your Priest is probably the weakest matchup coming into this. 
Um, your Grim Patron feels good. So I feel like pushing it to game five, again, you want to put your opponent in those spots where they feel like they have to make, or they feel like they should be scared. They feel like, you know, they might be susceptible to more mistakes. You do that. You're in a slightly better percentage, probably like one or two percent. Sure. I'm sure. But, you know, those little things matter. If you're talking about like 60% win rates, 55% win rates, those tiny little percentages definitely help. It wouldn't be a Frodan Great Turp cast without math in incorporated into a Frodan. Oh man, the I think, back of the I think day, my bro. math has gotten worse from casting Hearthstone. I don't even know how that's possible, considering that math is my, one of my worst subjects. <laughs> but you have to count a lot, but I know, I know, and you'd think so, but it turns out you need more than ten fingers to to count in Hearthstone. So you gotta play more Face Hunter, bro. <laughs> I no, played a they lot. They do the of face counting Hunter. for you. <laughs> It just goes, man. It's, it's like, true. Oh, yeah. It's Let's true. Just, uh, no matter what, I'm I'm going face. Face hunter is actually one of the one of the harder face decks to play. I think mech shaman's definitely like easier. I'm playing a new version of uh, mech now. I'm playing mech rogue. Whoa. Yeah, because I like using fell reaver hitting the face. It's Very really fun. Do you get the um, the iron the sensei? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a sick card. I love that, man. It just feels so good. You get on the nullifier. Well, you know, I, I really like destroying, pe ruining people's days. So I was like, well, I like, I like making people mad. I like winning, <laughs> but I don't want to do it with Hunter. Oh, I'll do it with Rogue. Oh, yeah. And I use Fell Reaver. Yeah. I sent it to Hyped, and Hyped's trying it out. So maybe maybe he'll use it. Maybe he won't. Probably not. It's, it's not very good. I don't believe that. <laughs> I don't believe well, it. Well, it's, it's, it's one of these things where I was like, I want to Earthshock this, but Earthshock leaves a 3-4 Sludge Belcher. Can I just get rid of it? And I was like, oh, I'll sap it. It's like, oh, I'll just play uh, Mac Rogue and, and just win. <laughs> By the way, this Twilight Drake, really annoying because he doesn't have Execute. Uh, having stuff like Slam is okay to at least cycle, but mm -hmm. he needs to start figuring out some combo damage. Now, the thing about it is that he has Warsong and Frothing Berserker, so... That's uh, that's a guaranteed seven damage burst from the hand. Do you go for frothing here or no? Oh no no no! I'm just saying you have to calculate for the idea of uh, when you can start push, like how much you can push, so that way you can start pressuring for I the see. win. I see. It's gonna trade out here. Of course, he can't just go for phase because he has to protect against hellfires, that kind of stuff. Well, does he have to protect? If he hellfires, like say he attacked the face there, he'd be at 15. If he hellfired, he'd be at 13 with three, uh, with one mana used. A little left, sorry, unused. And then he has uh, oh. a, a Armorsmith on board. That's true. 12. But honestly, like... Mm, it's close. It's yeah. one of those things where you have to like evaluate to see if it's Warlocks want to be that low, too, early on. The earlier on, the better, just because there's less threats to be, you know, just punishing you and, and bringing you down all the way to sure. zero. Um, but, of course, he doesn't have any uh, giants in his hand. But still, like it is the thought process that you want to be getting as low as fast as possible and then, like, catching up Tempo switching and getting regaining momentum. Yeah. Death now I, I think the death spite hits the face, set up for the possibility of killing. I guess you could get away with the armor smith hitting the face, but I would hold the cool taskmaster back for sure. Yeah, you do have war song, frothing berserker, and inner rage for turn six with the, the death spite. Right. And there's just so much if, synergy. If there's three minions on board, and you whirlwind effect, that's three damage. So Frothing Berserk will have 10 damage. But that's right. assuming Death Spike can't hit the face. You're going to be short damage no matter what if he taunts up Sludge Belcher or uh, Twilight Drake Sun Fury. Let's see what we do here. He's going to need Execute. If he executes, gets yeah. Execute, can he kill him? Um, I don't know. That's so much health. Yeah, it's really tough. How because you do cut this? a lot of your... your oh, wow. Uh, you do cut a lot of your... Um, your synergy with the death rattle death spite, so you're actually losing a lot of damage too. Does not get it. Very oh, unfortunate. Man. I think he still has the Warsong Frothing here though. Because like there's just way too much damage on the board. He can't be 16. taking Yeah, he's actually dead next turn. Yeah. If he coined Doctor Booms, uh is that it? Well it's twelve, fourteen, and then No, no he, he would probably attack and use the boom bots, right? Like he'd, oh, uh, oh. he'd he'd inner rage the cruel taskmaster into the uh, into the mountain giant and then whirlwind effect and let it happen. Okay. 
That's a that's yeah. a reasonable play because then yeah, the yeah. boom bots also might help clear. And he also gains and a lot of armor. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that might be a play. The problem is the variance of the boom bots. That's true. You could also guarantee it by uh, killing off the Drake, but I think the Giant's the bigger threat here. Oh, he just ends turn. He just ends turn? Is oh, that game? Wow. That's game, Is right? the series over? 14, yeah. Uh, 14, yeah. The Hellfire and the Dark yeah, Bomb. Yeah, so you Dark Bomb first and then Hellfire last. Doesn't matter how much armor he gains if he's dead. Wow. Yeah, he just needs to make sure that, that he goes for the, uh, really the Dark Bomb first. That's all. Well, to be fair, Handlock's not a deck that's been bursting a lot. It just so happens to be... But that's still, I mean, you're right, asking your opponent, do you have six damage in hand, right? Like, right. that's honestly what you're that's, saying. That's definitely capable with that many cards. Dark and bomb. Cross is not going to be happening. Oh, no! He's sad. He regrets everything. Because his series is over. He's going to gain five health. I hope, like, the Boom Pot's just, like, clear board right here. That'd be so sick. <laughs> That's it. Too deep. Game's over. Modern Leper stays alive to day number two. And I think uh, we're going to go over to the winner's match in just a few minutes. But let's, let's, let's do some closing thoughts on it. How do we feel about Cross's play here? I mean, he, he put himself in pretty comparable situations. Obviously, mm -hmm. his deck choices were the most um, suspicious, I would say. Uh, of being consistent, being able to guarantee wins for himself. Right, the Priest deck. Yeah. Meh. Yeah, the uh, good patient warrior. I have no complaints about the. As we were talking about, the shaman deck is mm. just super high variance. It's really going to be. It could. It has the capacity to kill any deck, mm -hmm. but you just need to draw absolutely correctly, and that's the tough part about it. It's just because like you don't know how it sets up your other decks to be able to counter or hard counter. You know your opponents. So you're in right. terms of like when you're going into this conquest mode where you're trying to be kind of as well-rounded as possible, I feel mm -hmm. like this is not the deck to really accomplish sure. like consistent wins. How about not, you, not, maybe, Yeah, I think lineup preparation is uh, so important with Conquest in general. I think people are starting to realize more. It's not necessarily about the individual strength of a deck, but how it fits into your overall strategy. And I have to kind of pinpoint, it's not necessarily how he played a certain uh, deck or a certain matchup. I think um, you can always pinpoint the mistakes. Obviously, he shouldn't have played Dr. Boom and just passed. Sure. Um, which is like the weirdest sentence I've ever said in my life. <laughs> it's the fact that it's uh, he he's playing bringing priests and how does he plan to have priests tackle the meta game? Like what pocket is he aiming at? And sometimes if you just get too fancy, you lose. And I think uh, this is exactly kind of what happened to Cross. He's out of the tournament, but he's not out of it fully yet. Next week we have the Redemption tournament from May 14th to the 17th. Four days of broadcast, four separate seven-player brackets. Every single runner-up. Second through eighth place over the four weeks of the Legendary Series will come back, play best of five conquest, and the winner of each bracket makes it to the season two land finals happening June fifth to seventh for twenty five thousand dollars. Make sure to get your tickets and come say hi. I know I'll be there. I'm not sure who else will be. There. I think DJ will be there. I think you're busy that weekend. Or you I have no clue what I'm doing with my life. Gotcha. Well, it's all on a schedule. We it's, might. We I'm might. Doing stuff. We might reach out to Andre. We'll yeah. see how things are going. Uh, but in the meantime, we're gonna have some more action here. With him and TJ. We have Luigi's versus Amaz coming up. That's the winner's match of Group A. The winner of that goes on to Day 2 into the semifinals. The loser goes to the elimination match tomorrow. So when we come back, we're going to have more action here at the Legendary Series Season 2, Week Number 4.